Welcome to our lecture online. Here again, we're meeting up with some of the interesting and challenging JE advanced questions you'll find on the test for students who try to get into a good college in India. And here's the question. It has to do with thermodynamics, with heat capacity particularly. And it says that a current carrying wire heats a metal rod. The wire provides a constant power P to the rod. The metal rod is enclosed in an insulated container, assuming that no heat can escape. It is observed that the temperature T in the metal rod changes with time, as that equation indicates. Where beta is a constant with appropriate dimensions, and T, assuming to be the initial temperature, is a constant with dimensions of temperature. The heat capacity of the metal is one of these four choices. Wow, where do you even begin? Now, since we're dealing with heat capacity, the equation comes to mind that we have dQ dt, the change, the heat exchange as a unit of, as a, a fraction of time or as a um, component of time, is equal to m, the mass of the object, of the metal rod, times the heat capacity, times the change in the temperature, mc dt. And of course, that would be equal to the power delivered and we're told that this was constant. And that's the key. And so they want to know what C is equal to of this rod to make that a constant. And they give us the temperature here, so let's take the differential of that. So if T is equal to that, then DT is equal to the derivative of that with respect to time. Notice that this is a constant, so that goes to zero. So we end up with one quarter T sub naught times beta times T to the minus three quarters, because we subtract one from the exponent. And that can then be substituted in here. So what we can now say is that P is equal to M times C, whatever C is, times DT, which is equal to one quarter, times T initial, times beta, times t to the minus three-fourths. And we know that that must be a constant. Which means that whatever we put in here, we put in A, we put in B, we put in C, or we put in D, that this must be a constant quantity. Now if I look at the four possible answers, notice there's a lot of simil similarity. They all have 4p in the numerator, the quantity t minus t sub naught, but only the exponents of that changes, so this changes. And then there's, of course, that would be a one in this case. It's not written specifically, but that would be a one. And then in the denominator, I have beta to the fourth power, that's the same everywhere, and t sub naught to the fourth power, to the fifth power, to the third power, to the second power, so that changes as well. So the only thing that changed in the answers are those two exponents. So that means I'm going to plug in here what I see. So I have 4p times t as a function of t minus t sub naught divided by beta to the fourth power t sub naught. And notice that the exponents can be 3, 4, 2, or 1 in the numerator. 3, 4, 2, or 1 in the numerator. And in the denominator, the exponents can be 4, 5, 3, and 2. 4, 5, 3, and 2. And notice that I put them in that specific order because when the numerator is 3 here, when the exponent numerator is 3, it's a 4 here. If it's a 4 there, it's a 5. If it's a 2, it's a 3. If it's a 1, it's a 2. So you can see that they go hand in hand like that. Now, which combination of exponents will make this a constant? Hmm. Let's see here. Let's see. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Now notice I have t minus t sub naught, and what I can do is I can look at this equation, I can say, well, I can replace that by something else. I can say that t minus t sub naught, t minus t sub naught is equal to, when I bring the one times t sub naught to the left side, I have left t sub naught times this on the right side. So that equals t sub naught times beta times t to the one-fourth on the right side. So I can actually replace t minus t sub naught by this. 
which makes more sense. So P is equal to M times 4P times, instead of writing that, I'm going to write T sub naught beta T to the 1 quarter power, and now the exponents there become 3, 4, 2, or 1. And in the denominator, we end up with beta to the fourth power, t sub naught raised to the 3, 4, 2, and 1. 1 quarter t beta t to the minus 3 quarter. And that should be a constant. Now they tell us that beta is a constant, t is a constant, so it doesn't really matter what the exponent is of beta and t sub naught because they're both constants. So you can raise them to any exponent, they're still a constant. But what isn't a constant is the t to the 1 quarter and the t to the minus 3 quarter. So let me circle those in a different color. So this is not a constant and this is not a constant. So what I need to do now is take the appropriate exponent so that when I multiply these two together, I get a constant. Hmm, let's see here. Let's see how we would accomplish that. So first of all, I can have t to the 1 quarter power raised to the third power and then multiply that times t to the minus 3 quarter power and see what I get. So when this is equal to t to the 3 quarters times t to the minus 3 quarters and of course that would be equal to t to the 0 which is equal to 1 that's a constant. That must be the answer but let me show you what would not be an answer. Let's take the next exponent uh, the exponent 4 so I get t to the 1 quarter raised to the fourth power times t to the minus three quarters and that would be equal to uh, t to the four over four times t to the minus three over four which is equal to t to the one over four which is not a constant because then it still would vary with time. So it looks like the only answer is the first one that I picked when I picked the exponent 3, again, 4 doesn't make any difference. So when I go over here, that's where I find the exponent 3. So A must therefore be the answer. If I plug this into here and I use the exponent 3, then t to the 1 fourth raised to the third power times t to the minus 3 quarter power become a constant. And then the whole thing on the right side is a constant. And therefore, that must be the right answer. A is the correct answer. Keep in mind, on the test, you only get three minutes to do this and you're not allowed a calculator and you can bring any notes or any equations so all these equations like like this these concepts need to be memorized and that's the key to doing well on the test I believe is to flat out memorize all the equations needed in physics and all the different topics in physics in order to be able to answer these questions and that is how it's done. You took eight minutes. Took me eight minutes? Yeah but I spent a lot of time explaining I could do this in three minutes. <laughs>